the way i look at it is that this startup movement is uh is actually heralding in a completely new thought process hmm. right and that thought process is that up till now historically we have looked at the governments to provide either measures for poverty alleviation yes. or you know provide jobs and i think now there is enough empirical evidence to support the fact that no government can do it mm. it is a dynamic challenge it it is a goal post that keeps shifting mm. you try and say oh by 2020 we will get 100000 families or a million families out of poverty by 2020 actually the economic strata has changed so much corona has happened and then actually some another million have been pushed into poverty yeah right so i think the therefore the the goal post has to move beyond the governments and ngos mm. and i feel that and i'm borrowing from the current political dispensation that atmanirbhar mm. at a certain stage mm. i think people have to take charge of their financial well being and their future in their own hands yeah. they cannot be dependent upon the governments of the day uh so yeah we spoke about squirrel uh you are the founder and ceo of squirrel which is a fintech company so i wanted to ask you how did you like come up with the idea when did you think about it and when did it come into execution so actually uh this is uh, you know whenever this question is asked yeah right hmm. usually the way it is asked it gives a sense that uh, there was one fine day and you know a ball dropped and that's yeah. where the idea popped <laughs> but, that's how uh, people like to think no? <laughs> uh, but yeah but it never happens like that yeah. right uh, yeah. like everything else there is a build up and it happens it's a gradual process and all that so i i mean i've been in financial services for now around 23 odd years yeah. and at the, uh, my large part of my stint was on asset management companies so i worked for various indian and global firms yes and i think uh, in my last stint what happened is that uh, obviously with a, such a large stint in the same industry what happens is you tend to get satiated at times uh you know you you want to discover more about yourself you want yeah. to upskill yourself you want different roles and i'm mm. i mean i must say that i consider myself really lucky because i think in my career i got an opportunity to work with some really fantastic people and at various different firms mm. Mm. who took a leap of faith and you know let me be a little bit of a vagabond in terms of trying to try my hand at various things various yeah. roles and so on and so forth yeah, yeah. uh but i think what happened in in the last few years at my stint which was with axis mm-hmm. uh, is it kind of uh, exposed me to something uh, uh, you know beyond financial services yeah 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 um, so you were working is, as an asset manager there am i right no i was actually uh, on the bd side so okay. at that time i was heading the marketing function the bd uh, i had moved out of sales i had got sick and tired of sales <laughs> so i was handling a, a little bit of customer initiative so i wanted to do i was running we were getting into first time into setting up a call center so you know those those were things that were more manifestation of businesses which got you closer to the consumers Yeah, how long and, back was this? Uh, this was fourteen uh, to seventeen types. Fourteen to seventeen, right? Yes. So fourteen uh, to sixteen, fourteen to sixteen, sixteen. I had moved out. Yeah. Hmm. So I got, I, you know, so I whatever. I mean, now I look back and joke about it or laugh about it to say oh, I was also responsible for the technology function at the firm. But I think what we called technology there was. basically nothing but hardware maintenance and you know website yeah. maintenance and uh, yeah. uh, making sure everybody had laptops and they were up and running and the network was up and running and stuff like that so uh 
I think uh, uh, so. But that gave me an exposure to a to a completely different side of the world of what was happening outside, especially at the intersection of technology and financial services. So those two years, I really enjoyed myself. You know, attended various conferences. We actually ran a. Uh, 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 we partnered with a fintech, yeah. with a startup to mm-hmm. build a platform for our advisors. Okay, like and an app again, or something. Yeah, yeah, and 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 app, not just an app, a complete platform. Okay. So that gave me an insight into what's happening in the world of technology. Just, uh, you know, interacting with them uh, mm-hmm. on a day-to-day basis, figuring out how's the adoption, what seems to work, what does not seem to work, and so on, so forth. So I think uh, so. Th- this is one parallel track that was happening. The other side that was happening was that all these years in the industry, I think one common challenge that the entire industry was facing uh, is that how do you really go beyond the current customer pool? India is a land of 1.3 billion people. When you look at access or participation or adoption of financial services products. We, we the numbers are very poor yeah. uh, and, you know we, we, there's lots more to be done and there is always that question for the industry and industry part- participants how do you really build how do you go beyond how do you get the next customer how do you provide access to these products and services and so mm-hmm. on and so forth so what i also realized that for a country like india not just in financial services therefore one of the biggest challenges lies in distribution yeah Anybody who's been able to crack the distribution piece in India mm. is successful. Distribution of any anything, anything. Could, could anything. be technology, anything. could be whatever. Yeah. Uh, so technology is a uh, is a is a medium. Yeah. Ultimately, a consumer needs a product or a service. Yes. And how do you make that thing available to her? Right. That's the that's the question that all of us are trying to uh, answer. Yeah. Technology has come up as a great option in terms of the medium as a distribution vehicle, right? Now you can say the manifestation of that vehicle is an app or a website or a yes. so on. So, forth. so I think the best examples that I give for this theory that I have is two companies, right? One is HLL. Uh, the fact that they are successful is not about product. Uh, it is about their distribution muscle and the distribution, uh, you know, uh, IQ, if I can use that word. Yeah. I'm okay. sorry, what is, which company is HLL? I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Hindustan like, Lever. Hindustan uh, Unilever. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Unilever. Okay. Right? Unilever. Uh-huh. The fact that they can sell you a shampoo of, a pouch of shampoo for one rupees in a small village near Mysore. Yeah. Or for that matter, Nestle can make available a packet of Maggi for five, six, eight, ten rupees at, you know, at the remotest remotest parts in Leh and Ladakh, yeah, yeah, yeah. where the entire value chain is making money. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Nestle is making money. Their stockist is super stockist is making money. Stockist is making money. Distributor is making money. Mm-hmm. Eventually, the guy who is selling that the Kirana store is making money. Yeah. Or for that matter, that. That stall Maggie Point. Today mm. there may be the thousands of Maggie Points or tens of thousands of Maggie Points mm. who buy a Maggie for ten rupees or fifteen rupees and add two rupees and sell a Maggie for fifteen to seventeen rupees, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so I'm saying in their entire value chain, mm. the ability to take that packet and to be able to make it available at Leh or Mysore or Thekadi in Kerala or mm. Pahadkoli in Assam. Yeah entire value chain is making money yeah is the power of distribution so that is yeah. one example that I give. Yeah. the other example that i give closer home is uh, financial services is hdfc bank mm. i think hdfc bank is now amongst the top 20 30 40 banks in the world amongst the top 10 banks in asia mm. and i think the if you look closely as to what is it that do differently from an sbi or a or a Axis or a Kotak or an ICICI. I think the 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 distribution network that they've built and the ability of that network to deliver numbers month on month, quarter on quarter, 
so ultimately it, uh, the nhdfc bank bank gets that kind of a valuation based only on the distribution multiple today yeah. if a if i am a manufacturing company for any product financial product let's say i i am a mutual fund company or i am an insurance company and if i can tie up with hdfc bank that's a mm. dream come true yeah because i'm going to pick in the product from the top and that funnel is such a well oiled machinery mm-hmm. that it will ensure that in ta- across the length and breadth of the country my product is going to be available and uh, well distributed so i i mean i stepping back uh, financial services i found that for a country like india so unlike mm-hmm. singapore where has their challenges could be different us the challenges could be different yeah or europe the challenges could be different i think the india challenges are distribution Yeah, yeah. And uh, so, what did you reach to? Like, what was the conclusion? How do they go about yeah, it? How yeah, does Maggie yeah, do yeah. it? How does Coke do it? So I think building building distribution networks, at least in physical world, is a very time consuming process. So, a great question, yeah. because if somebody, if if I know about this, yeah. I'm sure uh, Nestle knows what Unilever does, and P&G knows what Unilever and Nestle both do. right and let's say today itc has jumped into the fray in their business right or closer home let's say there is a new bank license that has been given today and a new banker now wants to compete with hdfc so today to build that distribution network is not just difficult it is also time consuming and costly yeah they took two decades to build a 5000 5500 branch network in the country Mm-hmm. and build the acquired customers build trust with them sold products got entrenched in the life cycle of the customer now so as a customer of let's say a hdfc bank i have not just have a savings bank account i have taken a credit card also i have a mobile loan also going i you know go to the branch to uh, make payments to send money elsewhere yeah. uh, and so on so forth so now it has become entrenched mm-hmm. now for a new b to come and Pull that customers away. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be time consuming. Yeah. Right? So I with a lot of advertisement, that. maybe just be omnipresent, then maybe that's how we can start. But I don't think so. The ads and all work for places like Lay and Mysore, like you said. Yeah. So I think uh, uh, all is not lost here. Hmm. Let me put it that way. Yeah. i think the and that is where we saw an opportunity so i think we saw two three things the way i understood the challenge and the opportunity because i feel challenge and opportunity are two sides of the same coin yeah so uh, i think uh, the i divided the world into two simple hubs hmm. uh, in terms of population in terms of the segment of customers stay rich and get rich hmm. and to my mind the existing guys are focusing on the stay rich category the get rich population is not their target audience as yet right because yeah. they feel chota ticket size who is going to the cost of opening a branch in that locality then cost of putting an rm to service that customer is very expensive so let's go after the customers who have at least a few lakhs or you know 50000 rupees yeah, their bank yeah. account and all that so lower than that the get rich population has kind of been denied access to products and services that was our first understanding two i think the interesting thing is out of 1.3 billion people in the country it's a very interesting statistic 65% of the population was born after 1980 yeah so we are actually from a demographic perspective a very very different i not don't call the youngsters a different Uh, uh, generation, I call them a different species. <laughs> Can you right? elaborate a little more? Yeah. So if you break that 1.3 billion people, uh, 65% of them were born after 1980. Yeah. Uh, the reason I am saying this with such stress is because I was born in 74. Okay. Right? <laughs> so, so, so you're not the same species. Yeah? <laughs> not at all. So there is. There is a 440 million people yeah. born between 1980 and 2000. They are typically called the millennials. Mm-hmm. But what is fascinating is there is another 390 million 
which are born after 2000 right yeah. so yeah. this 390 plus 440 is the 65% of the population yeah. and i think the reason i'm saying they are a different species is because let and i can only talk about let's say the financial services business here hmm. that let's take a common example of a bank okay i don't see a reason why any one of these 65% population cohort they don't have a reason to go into a bank branch hmm. of course they the, when i was growing up the only reason i would go to a bank branch is that i would apply for some admission to some university or you had to pay your college or school fee so you would need to get what is called as a pay order or a demand draft made yeah so you would have to go fill out that form deposit the money make that hmm. those use cases do not exist today yeah there's any yeah. fd but who does that anymore <laughs> no but even if the first, i mean you have rtgs you have now upi yeah 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 right so i think the thing is that the financial services industry has to reimagine its own proposition for the young audiences mm-hmm. it you know the old use cases do not exist the old mediums of service do not exist they don't care about your branch if i have a branch near my house they don't care about it. so they for this whether, yeah sorry sorry you said so they don't know whether or they they know that they are picking up a job in bangalore next they could be in singapore they could move to bombay or they could be in delhi hmm. the branch has no meaning for them yeah exactly yeah. Hmm. their use cases have to be met the third thing is you know there was a, a thing in olden times saying we are a customer service team right yeah i think the 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 whole meaning of service to customers also needs to completely change mm-hmm. you know we have to re- i mean i i we run a savings and investments platform right now yeah and i am really zapped when i get up in the morning and i look at the you know i'm looking at the back end dashboard and i see people have made some investments at 2 o'clock in the morning 1 o'clock, <laughs> o'clock at night which is very alien to somebody like me saying yeah this is no time to do all this right? <laughs> but that's the new generation yes and the other part is that they need when when i was talking about service they want to be served in the moment because their 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 medium of engagement is real time it is an app or an online platform yeah if their expectation if something is not clear or something is not working i will be served in the moment yes because this thing is working that means something behind it should also be working mm-hmm. so what do you mean exactly is they should be thinking about it and it pops up in front of them is that what it is so i'm just saying that as a business therefore hmm. the way you look at your consumer and therefore the way you want him to be served hmm. has to be completely reimagined yeah yeah right hmm. so if i make something if i have done a like a, I, i'm amazed that i mean i don't want to name the brand but uh, i make a payment for my credit card right Yeah. the message that i get is that okay this will be we will account for it in 36 hours and let you know hmm right and suppose i have, today is the last day let's say 25th december is the last day to make the payment hmm. and we are having this conversation at 6:30 yeah. and i now remembered yeah. i have to make a payment and i make a payment now hmm. and if somebody tells me that we will get back to you in 36 hours and tell you whether the payment has been reconciled or not yeah I'm like buddy today was the last day I have made it in time please yeah, don't come exactly. back to me later by saying that you have not received it in time exactly you can't be taking 36 hours to reconcile the payment when the mm-hmm. money has left my bank account right now mm-hmm. and it is not the purana system where I've given you a check you will deposit it for banking and then it will come for clearing after 3 days mm-hmm. it has left my bank right now and it has come to your bank right now yeah yeah so there is no reason for you to reconcile for 36 hours mm-hmm. so i'm mm-hmm. saying that you know the whole philosophy of service has to change to success okay 
So it cannot be customer service. It has to be customer success. To say that mm. how can mm. I make you successful? Yeah. So therefore, the generations use cases are very different. Mediums are different. Mode of delivery is different. The you know engagement is different. So therefore, I call them the second the the uh, a different species altogether. <laughs> so I was just trying to tell you the pillars of the opportunity. One was of course the the fact that. Uh, there is an un underserved or unserved segment in terms of stay rich and get rich. So get rich is underserved. Mm. Second was the fact that a very large part of the demographics, therefore, needs to be the the product and the proposition needs to be reimagined. Mm. Mm. And the third very important thing that I uh, felt is in financial services and in a lot of other businesses, but like I said, I'll focus more on financial services. There is a very large intermediation layer, right? A distributor, or a, a, you know. Yeah. So if I was a distributor of a product, let's say if I am selling an insurance, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I would of I will always represent a manufacturer. Okay. Right. So if I would come to you, right, and say, Arpit, I've got this mutual fund to sell. This is a XYZ mutual fund. It is mm -hmm. a great scheme. Yeah. I want to, I'm here to sell you this product mm -hmm. or I'm here to sell you this insurance policy. Mm -hmm. Right. So what I'm trying to say is historically, the intermediation layer has always represented the manufacturer that I am here at the behest of the manufacturer at the behest of the product. Yeah. Right. But I think what is fundamentally changed in today's world, especially with the advent of technology, is this intermediation layer is now completely switching sides. Okay. This what we call as platform. It has become the most abused word. Everybody thinks it's a platform and everybody is everything is a platform. But in, to us, the true nature and the meaning of a platform is it does not represent a manufacturer to the consumer but rather stands on the side of the consumer and represents the consumer to the manufacturers. Oh, that's a beautiful way of looking at it. Yes. Right. So yeah. if I stand on the manufacturer side, mm. then I'm going to all the consumers saying, here is a product, mm. here is the product, here is the product. And this is what the product that I'm getting to you. Yeah. But if I'm standing on the side of a consumer, Mm. And I'm a platform and I understand what Arpit needs. Mm. Mm. I don't need to show him 25 products. Na. Exactly. I know Arpit ki requirement is A. And there are three good options that serve A. Let Arpit choose between those three. Yeah, what not to confuse him with like 25 products. Yeah. Absolutely. What is the point of me choose? I mean, what is Amazon doing today? If you are going to a store earlier, you would go to a store. He's got a big show window. There are various sections. You're going to the section. Then you're going to that thing. Then you're choosing that product. You are entering saying, boss, I want to buy headphones. So it is lining up, curating the headphones for you saying, these are the headphones. And it is also saying Arpit, you live in Bangalore. There are five manufacturers who are not delivering to Bangalore today. So I'm only showing you the four which deliver to Bangalore. Yeah, yeah. I know. So I think I know I the, if you stand if you stand on the side of the consumers, then there is a lot of platform thinking that you can deliver with relevance and, and the experience. So that's the third part and the opportunity that we saw that in the world of financial services where everything is so jargonized and complex. Mm. Can you massively simplify it and really stand on the side of the consumer and uh, you know make available uh, uh, whatever is needed? So, like when you identify that uh, there was a like a long gap in how these big companies were doing it, and you wanted to target a young audience, so how did you plan it out that this is what we are going to do now, and you know how did you come up with what whatever that you're doing right now with Spirit? So I, I like that's a journey, right? So yeah. our, our aspiration was that uh, uh, 
that we would want to be a true platform and then slowly and surely we will add all products that add value mm -hmm. to lifestyle uh, you know for the life cycle of a consumer whatever he or she may need we mm -hmm. will bring all that on the platform so how do you generally go about it like uh, do you uh, so like do you like promote it on social media is that the way to reach to the young audience or okay so now you're talking about distribution what is the distribution yeah, strategy yeah, yeah, yeah. at the end of the day that's a, a, another a very very a million dollar or a billion dollar question to say <laughs> how yeah. do you therefore now make yourself available to the target audiences hmm. so i think there the the thing is that uh, there are um, we are big believers in digital first of all Which i call financial financial digital no ah. is it physical plus digital oh physical it is at right so uh, we 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 are trying to do multiple things or uh, focusing on multiple things i think digital is of course uh, a part of our dna so what you talked about from a social media perspective mm -hmm. is something that we continue to do whether it is facebook insta google so on so forth yeah. other content partnerships and and uh, 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 partnerships with other platforms and stuff like that so yeah, yeah. Uh, i think that does uh, more than acquisition i think it does uh, uh, what i call awareness mm. uh, about making sure that people are aware there is something called a squirrel and in the zone and in the area that we uh, are in mm. uh, from an acquisition perspective like i said we do uh, 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 partnerships is a very large function for us mm -hmm. so again agree to disagree our philosophy is lot of players think oh i will be the disruptor yeah. i will disrupt everybody else yeah and to me that word has a negative connotation right okay. you are the one you land up somewhere and say i will disrupt everybody who has ever ex existed mm -hmm. so we rather believe in rather than competing we believe in co creating so we actually focused quite hard on partnerships so we are saying if this is a target audience and this is our core specialization then i'm sure this challenge also exists for incumbent banks and large nbfcs and other uh, you know uh, uh, institutions yes yes exactly i can't why can't we just partner with them hmm. rather than trying to compete with them right so um we've actually cracked one of our biggest partners partnerships uh, i mean we were supposed to go live before corona got delayed with icici bank so they have actually built a platform targeted at millennials they built a bank within the bank for this target audience mm -hmm. and squirrel is a exclusive savings and investments partner in that is it out there already the icici yeah it, okay. yeah, yeah it's mm -hmm. it's out there now and there are two more banks that we are speaking to right now so that also is uh, up and running right um, in the sense we are in the course of closing out those commercial discussions and stuff yeah, like that yeah, yeah. we have tied up with another banking correspondent platform we have tied up with another distribution platform so the intent is so one pillar of uh, growth like i said was the digital part the other is this partnerships part which is mm. we believe is a very large play yeah uh, it helps us get access to large customer pools and you know build uh, winning partnerships but uh, like you said you were uh, you actually went to the banks and told them about the idea that you are going for but you both are in the same sort of business like isn't it like competitive that you are partnering with the same sort of business or like when you said ki we are going to partner i thought you were going to go to maybe like an ogilvy Who's a say, which is a sales company, and you are a financial company, and then you are going to collaborate. So, so I'm saying we are open to that as well. Yeah. Uh, with to, to uh, Gilvi as well. Yeah. But coming back, I think that is a very narrow way of looking at things, and that is the way things were looked looked at in the past to say, oh, he's a competitor to me. <laughs> so, I, and that is why I used my words very carefully to say we don't want to be seen as a competitor to them. what we are trying to say is how can we co-create something right i think the good part is that 
the institutions of tomorrow the incumbents who are smart hmm. are realizing that there are things that they cannot do in house exactly yeah either because of their pedigree either because of their legacy hmm. either because of their corporate structure so hmm. for various reasons they have realized that there is a certain amount of startup thinking product thinking hmm. a fresh thinking that is needed yeah now there are a lot of guys who think just like the way you said oh these are startups how i mean they are competitor to us they are going to nibble away at our customer base right because you both are providing the same service like get get money on board and provide them with returns on it so yeah, yeah. so but that's but that's what i'm saying i mean i must compliment this bank's leadership because they felt that instead of let's say my icici bank customer going and opening an account at squirrel why don't we get squirrel on icici bank itself hmm hmm yeah. right so i'm saying that's the mindset issue and that's the platform thinking to say hmm. that why can't we co-create something rather than compete which is a win win for us i hmm. mean like I, i said in the beginning i am not here to say oh i'm going to disrupt the largest banks and i'm going to become bigger than them yeah i'm saying i'm focused on the side of the consumer i'm not standing on the side of the manufacturer mm. so for me i'm very happy to partner with as many platforms or at many banks and financial institutions as possible which helps the improve the adoption at a cons- consumer level yeah so infrastructure also like uh, do they provide you with the infrastructure as well and everything like right? Uh, their servers, their everything—is that the collaboration? So it again depends. It depends. I think horses for courses because that is IT is again a very touchy subject for large banks and financial institutions, mm. specifically in the last one year with what has happened. I think yeah. the instances of uh, 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 you know uh, uh, frauds have gone up. Yeah. Instances of hacks have gone up. So I think they are. Uh, for right reasons because they are known to be uh, uphold the trust of millions of customers yes they are they have various different uh, i would say uh, uh, policies regarding their it and uh, data privacy and therefore partnership with them is not easy yeah uh, i'm not for a moment of course, of course yeah the big institution is but then the way we look at it is if it is not easy that means it also has more value right yeah. it is more value creative and and at the end of the day as long as we can deliver that experience in their infrastructure mm. through secure means uh, uh, with whatever be- uh, you know uh, 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 extra layers of uh, security that they need yeah. we are very happy yeah. to work with them that's not an issue at all so uh, like you said uh, ki uh, you are targeting young audience so usually the young audience that we see they don't have like the spending capacity or they are not the ones taking the financial decisions for themselves so uh, why target them in the first place or like how do you go about it when you know it already that they are not the ones taking the financial it's a it's a i mean i i i appreciate the question um, somebody had when i was starting out had asked me the same question saying you know there are uh, there are users and then there are non users mm. why won't you straight away first target the users yeah right yeah, yeah. they understand it. you are taking the harder route of saying i will convert the non users to be users mm. Mm. right yeah and for right or wrong reasons our argument or our thought process from the beginning has been that in the users category there is already too much competition hmm. there are 50 banks 50 other financial institutions trying to go after the same customer year on year right yeah. fighting amongst uh, themselves for market share hmm. and if we have to really use technology as the mode of engagement for delivery Mm. then why would why should we restrict ourselves to say that we will only work with these guys actually for me uh, the biggest learning was when i was doing my mba there was this whole thing about 
adoption and the mm. case study was again from shampoos yeah yeah right your mba was from iit yeah so 30 30 years ago there was this uh, uh, you know al- shampoos were a very alien concept to india okay we all used to use uh, soap bars mm. and uh, when shampoos first came to india they found it these fmcg companies find it extremely difficult to tell mm. indians to invest a in a 30 or a 40 rupee bottle for shampoo mm. whereas they could buy a soap for 4 5 rupees yeah yeah so that's where to break that whole mold of adoption they came with the sachet yes exactly right for 1 yeah. rupee uh-huh. right and it's a very successful case study to say for an alien product where you want to drive adoption mm-hmm. how do you sachet size the product mm-hmm. and drop the adoption economic price also to a manner that it is not a cognitive load in the purchasing journey ek rupaye ka to hai right so they said boss tum 30 rupees ka bottle mat kharido tum ek rupaye ka sachet khareed lo hmm aur tum char din use karke dekho char sachet khareed lo panch sachet khareed lo use a rupee a, a day and see Haan. experience Haan. the product then if you like it you buy the full bottle hmm right so let's say the bottle is for 25 bucks then you save some money or whatever indians being indians they bought one sachet used it for 5 days so thoda sa use kara fir thoda sa use kara fir thoda use kara but coming back i think that that learning from that to for an alien product for an for a new customer category to drive adoption you need hmm. to drop the economic order ha- price point has to be such that it is not a cognitive load and the sachet part yeah, yeah. so that is what we tried to do in financial services so we in our savings and investments have taken it down to 1 rupee hmm. our most popular product is called squirrel away okay. and that does exactly what you are saying which is basically ki mere paas to paise hai nahi mere se to save hi nahi hote hain hmm. hmm. so that basically rounds up every time a consumer spends hmm. So, so every time is the minimum amount one can invest with one means. rupee one rupee okay yeah so that product basically when you sign up every time you are spending the loose change in multiples of one rupee is invested so if you buy a pair of bata shoes and pay 2999 hmm. one rupee will be squirreled away you pay for an amazon shopping on 184 rupees 16 rupees will be squirreled away so okay. it will be rounded up all your spends will be rounded up to the next 100 or 500 whatever you choose but the point is that for somebody who says i can't save if you marry the problem statement by saying that okay you can't save but every time you spend i will create a reason for you to also save mm-hmm. and do it automatically is something that you know uh, is unique to us uh, so that is something that so it becomes like a cashback thing like one purchases it from somewhere and then It's not gets. a cash bag, actually. So it's no, not something of that sort. Like I wanted to, like actually understand. It, it. Yeah, because I'm very wary of those words because we are a, we work under a regulatory environment and we yeah. can't incentivize. So it's very interesting that how there is a regulatory arbitrage also. Hmm. Uh, banks and the payment companies can incentivize transactions, hmm. but investment products cannot invest incentivize investment. Yes. so i cannot come and tell you that you oh, you invest with me i'll give you 100 rupees cash back i can't hmm. Hmm. so in fact we have very strong laws in place to ensure that we can't take this money the money also has to come from the customer's bank account hmm. so hmm. it is not like you can pay for your brother okay or your dad can pay for you hmm. all those things are not allowed third party payments are not allowed money has to come from your bank account only so the <laughs> money the 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 transaction may be made by you on a wallet hmm hmm right yeah. but we will take the rounded up amount through the bank but we are just trying to create a little bit of a what do you say a color an adoption a kind of a thing so that it becomes a, a, a easier and automated and stuff hmm. then we have uh, built some uh, savings uh, uh, goal based savings tools uh, again where we have gam- gamified it and made sachets there as well mm-hmm. 
so some you come to the platform and say i want to save to buy a a a, a mac pro airbook or i want to save for a vacation next year to see northern lights mm-hmm. so we then gamified it by saying okay there is an adventurous way to go to your goal there is a practical way to go to your goal there is a cautious way to go your go to your goal yeah and we'll help you then save through that route to get to your goal so again there are sashes that we have created of these uh, uh, uh you know investment goals and all that so i think that is what we are trying to do and yes therefore uh, uh, both sides were taking the load by saying we'll go to a non user hmm and therefore we don't want to sell a product so our user journey is never to say oh aap ye product khareed lo ye scheme khareed lo mm-hmm. our user journey is always about what is your goal where do you want to be and how can squirrel help you get there and by the way in that whole journey the product is a vehicle to get you there so like how is the sales distribution like i wanted to ask you how is the sales distribution of your company which is a startup is different from say like in icici like i know uh, ki they target uh, their 70% of their ad budget goes on tv because yeah older people watches tv and then yeah rest 27% is only what goes to the social media because of the same reason that young people don't spend it for themselves So how is like a sales sales or like a distribution channel of a big company different from say a startup I think specifically if i talk about banks yeah i think uh, they have a very large physical sales force which sits hmm. out of their branches yeah uh, so i would hmm. think almost 80% of their or 90% of their sales will be driven by uh their in their uh, sales uh, teams right mm, mm. whereas in our case there is no team yeah right okay. so either it okay. is either it is social media either it is digital or it is partnerships mm. our entire team is 18 people which includes uh, uh, the founders includes the technology team includes the customer service includes finance and compliance so uh, sales as a function does not exist there is okay. marketing there is no sales as a function yeah, yeah. so i think to that extent the whole uh, uh, and that's why i say the dna is very different even if a large bank today wants to change that dna hmm. it it cannot it is it is configured it is architected in a certain manner it is you know there are legacy issues it cannot change overnight Of and course. that's the reason i was saying that those partnerships are a great great win win for both mm-hmm. just like jio and facebook happen yeah. yeah yeah even the big companies are collaborating now so yeah so like i wanted to ask you uh, if there is like a new guy who wants to start out in the same space finance uh, finance technology uh, fintech so like how, what's the first thing that he should do maybe write out a business plan and do like what are going to be the steps he, he or she should look out for i think the first thing that uh, i would advise somebody to do is hmm. to figure out the problem statement yeah. what is the challenge or the problem that he or she is looking to solve hmm. validate how big a problem it is okay right so let's say i i mean just i say that you know paying my bills is a problem for me and i if sometimes there is one this deadline of a credit card one time for electricity one for phone i'm not able to manage it and yeah every now or then i let's say end up missing a deadline and stuff like that hmm. so if this is a problem that somebody says is a big problem and they want to solve mm-hmm. it's important to to find out how big a problem is it yeah is it that samanth is a very uh, uh, unorganized kind of a guy and therefore he cannot you know so, uh, attend to all this mm-hmm. most of the people have similar uh, uh, i mean have don't have this problem mm-hmm. or have been easily able to manage this with some other tool 
let's say they have signed up with a bank to say please pay my bills on time or they've signed signed up with a credit card to say please pay my bills on time right mm-hmm. so there could be other way to so somebody may have access to other products and tools to solve the problem yeah to but if he realizes no actually there are millions of people like someone mm-hmm. and it is a very real problem and millions of people are not able to do this yeah so that's the second level of uh, uh, second step to be done first is to identify the problem mm-hmm. second is to figure out how large a problem this is so like figuring out could be uh, like you could run and add a test add and see if like see how many people are reacting to it or clicking on it is yeah. that is that the way to figure it out yeah yeah, yeah mm-hmm. absolutely mm-hmm. okay and yeah i mean no, if you okay. Well, you could do anything you could do an ad small uh, insta ad google ad hmm. do a small uh, poster or a leaflet in the colony that you really live in 500 people get that respond to that whatever whichever hmm. way you can hmm. validate how large is the problem cool the third step that i would advise is to figure out that what is the and those two have to be done in tandem what is the solution okay and what is the cost of that solution hmm and the I mean, it is like a pyramid the third dimension of that is therefore what is the money to be made hmm hmm right yeah so i'm just i'm just hypothetically taking up this example building up this example further hmm. so let's say the cost of building that solution is the solution is that there is an app that you hmm. build a app where the guy signs up and says boss you are going to give me a reminder mm. and you are going to make sure that either you i will have a upi integrated with it or stuff like that where i will pay i will you know remind you call you whatever it is and mm. the customer will be able to tap and all the bills will be paid yeah. let's say that is the solution mm. and the guy the 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 cost of building that is let's say of the building that app is let's say or or building that business hmm. uh, is a certain cost yeah and then you figure out okay for this service the customer is saying i'm willing to pay 100 rupees hmm. or the the guys the 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 airtel the phone companies the 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 banks the utilities the electricity company they are willing to give you a cut to say okay if you help people pay the bills if you help hmm. me collect bills it's a large problem for me to collect bills mm-hmm. i don't want to open offices put people where people come to deposit their checks and all that if you can help me solve for that problem i'm willing to give you 1% of the the volume that you do as a, a commission for it as a fee for yeah. it and all yeah. that yeah and then you hype, you know you kind of figure it out okay that let's say a million people have this problem mm-hmm. i'm looking at a 20% market share on this business let's say in the first year or two years and therefore that is 200k and let's say the average bill value is 10000 rupees mm-hmm. right so 10000 yeah. 10000 means that uh, uh, 200k will become 20k uh, 20 lakh Yeah, two crores. That's like two thousand crores worth of business volume mm. that I will do. Mm. Mm. I have two thousand crores of volume that I do, and I make one percent of it. Yeah, uh, that's a you know ten percent twenty. That's twenty crore revenue. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's a twenty crore revenue business. Mm. Uh, and whether I take two years to break even, three years to break even is a is a matter of then operations to say how much. so i i would say you approach it in that framework mm. so if you've got a validation on your point number 2 where that there is a customer need mm. and it is a large enough need that warrants and the third answer is that there is scale that means that you know you can build a app or a business or whatever mm. and you can build a scale on that yeah and that scale can deliver revenues i think that's that's all you need to start with perfect so like uh, one stage number one okay sorry uh-huh. that's stage number one right mm-hmm. if, if there are check boxes to all this then there is a second part of the exercise also mm-hmm. 
Hmm. To figure out, okay, what are the skill sets that do I need now to execute this? Exactly. What are the resources yeah. that I need? Hmm. So you would hmm. need resources in terms of financial resources and human resources, hmm. right? So let's talk about the human resources first. So if you look at the human resources, you will figure out saying is business ko chalane ke liye what are the key skill sets do we need? Hmm. Let's say the key skill sets do we need is that we will need a very strong tech platform, yeah. right? And two, we will need a somebody very strong to from BD, who can go to all these payment companies and forge all these relationships, tie ups, to make sure that their bills can be paid and collected on our platform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you are let's say, let's say these are the two skill sets that are needed. Mm. So one guy says, look, I am great in uh, uh, BD. That's my core, but I am not good on technology. Yeah. Now the question is that therefore should we should I get a co-founder who comes from the technology world so that uh, you know we are aligned on this? Of course. Uh, so then there is a hunt for a co-founder, mm. right? So mm. uh, that's and then once that is done, then you kind of figure out what are the key positions now you need to make to get this business above ground. And you know you need an ops guy, you need a the tech guy needs his tech team and stuff like that. So that's the manpower side of the uh, uh, solution. Mm. The, th the other is the <coughs> financial resources part of the, uh, what do you say, um, requirement. Yeah. So there you then figure out to say that you revisit those uh, numbers that crunching that you had done to say that, okay, if I need to get to 200K investors out of that, let's say a million, I'm looking at a 20% market share. Yeah. How will I acquire those customers? Where will I get them? Mm -hmm. Will I do advertisement in the newspaper? Will I do Google, Facebook ad? Will I tie up with the, uh, the underlying bill payment company or an electricity company only mm -hmm. that they put it on their bill only to say yeah. he's our authentic collection agent, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So you think through the feet in terms of what is your acquisition engine going to be. Mm -hmm. And uh, then you apportion a certain cost to acquisition. Mm -hmm. You apportion a cost for tech build out. You, you apportion a cost for manpower cost and you build like a, what I would say is a, a business plan of sorts to say that, let's say for the next three years, Mm -hmm. How much money, money do I need to run my business, uh, get off the ground? How much do I need to keep it alive? How much do I need for tech? How much do I need for marketing? So on and so forth. And then you come back saying, okay, let's say I need a crore of rupees over the next three years. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And for year one, I will need, let's say 25 lakhs. Mm -hmm. And Either you say, okay, I will, me and my co-founder will put in 25 lakhs on the table and get it off the ground. Mm -hmm. Or you say, I will put in my five, 10 lakh rupees, whatever I have, I can. Mm -hmm. And then you go start looking for angel investors mm -hmm. who can give you that 15, 20 lakhs to get you off the ground. Did you follow the same trajectory? Uh, like you got the co-founder on board and then you went for the angel investor or or are you an angel investor yourself so yeah that is not the initiative no so i am a little different uh we definitely i definitely was very clear that uh this journey is very long and lonely mm -hmm. and you cannot do it alone a lot of people think i am the start and i can do everything i mm -hmm. i'm i was very clear i can't yeah uh, and i think therefore i had to first hunt for uh, co-founders so i yeah. have two co-founders Okay. So the way we've broken the pie amongst ourselves is one comes from the world of technology. So he owns the technology. Hmm. One owns the ops and I own the growth. Yeah. So there is a clear articulation of skills and <coughs> expectations from each other. Uh, I After that, we did not follow the same order. Hmm. We decided that we will not uh, we put our own money and say we will not go and raise money before we launch the product. Okay. Uh, because you end up diluting too much and more than diluting, I think fundraising 
is a very time consuming and an exhaustive exactly. exercise yeah yeah and we wanted that first year we should not spend any time anything apart from our product mm. so we were very very inward looking for the first 12 15 months we focused only on the product our journey speaking to customers figuring out what do they need and so on so forth and then um, uh, in fact we didn't even raise money in after go live uh, we almost raised money after a year after go live so we raised a million dollars from early stage fund in 2018 okay we went live in march of 2017 yeah so we bootstrapped the business for the first almost one and a half two years yeah yeah uh so i want to ask you as a sum ki uh, if it's uh, your your is a product it's a, it's an app which people can use or it's a service it's a service but if it's something like a skill that someone is selling online and if the cost for that service or that skill to learn supposedly like i i come from a uh, entertainment background i am a musician i make music in sound for films you know so if i want to say uh, teach music to uh, someone in a tier 3 city and uh, it's a music technology thing you just need a laptop and a headphone but uh, these people don't have so much money to actually get the laptop and do these things but they are really curious to or they 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 actually want to learn if i compare them to like say guys in delhi because they have too many options here so they are uh, you know very excited to go about it so if if like the cost is so big and also i can't te- i can't also teach them if they don't have like uh, money to go about it so i want to ask you how do i reduce the cost of acquisition or maybe uh, no, uh cost of acquisition is not the right word for it but uh, cost uh, the, the amount that they are going to spend on it you know how do i bring that down so that they are able to do it and you know they don't face any financial issues if they want to actually go about it so okay from what i am hearing from you is the problem statement mm-hmm. correct me if i am wrong yeah 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 so you are a let's say a mu- musician yeah uh, for for making it simple i'll say you are uh, you you are an amazing guitar player and you want kids to or let me not use guitar let's say piano you're a great piano player and there are kids who want to learn to live uh, uh, to learn uh, to play piano and now in your case obviously there is a physical manifestation the classes can be done online yeah but there is a manifestation in a device hmm. the guy on the other side has to have a keypad to say that Uh, uh if sir is telling me play this note uh, uh. i have to play that note yeah right mm-hmm. there is that device that is needed mm. now whether that device you are saying could be a laptop could be an actually keyboard a keyboard or you know i i'll just uh, take that as a mm. now you're saying that there could be a uh, and it's a very interesting idea so well, you know there is a there could be somebody who may not want to invest in a keyboard right on day 0 mm-hmm. yeah i mean actually i want to learn to play the piano mm-hmm. but i am not going to buy a piano for a lack of rupees because i don't know whether i will take to it or not exactly let's say i do 10 classes and i say you know what i thought about piano is not the same i don't mm-hmm. want to do it mm-hmm. any longer yeah and therefore i am not going to put a capex right in front to say pehle main piano lunga then i will learn the 10 classes of course So how to solve for that? So you are saying that capex is becoming a a a, a roadblock, hmm. right? Yeah. Let's say hypothetically that the cost of your class is thousand rupees a class. Okay. Okay. Hmm. The customer is easily will really happy to play that thousand rupees a class, hmm. right? And suppose I mean I'm just saying for the. purpose of understanding and making it into a solution for you that the cost of you sell those packages in a batch and not as a single class you say that look when you come you will have to take a batch of 10 classes together okay right so you will have to pay 10000 rupees 10 classes 
you can take those 10 classes over the next 30 days 60 days whatever okay. but you have to buy it not as a single order quantity but as a whatever uh, as a bunch as mm -hmm. a as a bouquet of course and this is what each class is going to be first class is going to introduce you to this second is this third is this fourth is this fifth is this 10th class you will be able to play this song you'll be able to play this piece mm -hmm. and you will get a certificate yeah i will give you a certificate to say you have cleared level 1 mm -hmm. right yeah so suppose that cost is 10000 rupees and people are willing to pay for that 10 also with that whole program not as a class but now as a program mm -hmm. but now there is the challenge that the guy needs to have a piano or a keyboard or whatever yeah the physical thing what if you said okay now the class cost of the class is 1500 Hmm. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. And it's not 10,000. And 500 is the rent for that piano or the keyboard. All right. Do you think the consumer, then it is a variable model. The consumer says, okay, I have 15 classes for a keyboard. And sir, I have a class. I have a certificate. Bhi milega. But now I, after 15 classes, I will have to take a call. Either I buy a piano, invest in a piano or don't invest in a piano. Mm -hmm. But the fact is that now this is done. Yeah. yeah. Why and I to was make cu curious about... Yeah, sorry, you were saying something. I mean, if that is not a piano and if whatever you are thinking can be done with a laptop, mm -hmm. then the problem becomes even easier to solve mm -hmm. because then I know of players who do rental for laptops yeah yeah even my dad does it he's also in the same place it yeah. so yeah so then you can tie up with some of them yeah so they actually create tie up with a... my dad dad you know tie up. <laughs> so, I, I leave that that's always a very tricky thing dad i'm very professional let's just do it on page <laughs> i leave that to you <laughs> you two to figure out yeah uh, uh and the, the so uh, my point is then you are then not offering, you're going as a solution to mm -hmm. say that, look, this is what we do. Our package is for 1500, uh, 15,000 rupees a package. Mm -hmm. We send you the laptop, we ship it to you. We collect it back mm -hmm. and uh, we give you these classes on the laptop. Mm -hmm. Maybe the content and some programs are preloaded onto that laptop. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Okay. You know why I actually was curious about it was because there was this student of mine. A couple of months back, he told me, so I had sold my ring to actually take the classes and all. I'm like, dude, what are you saying? You don't have to do all that. You know, you could have just called me. Like, it's all right. <laughs> and here, yeah. students are saying, Ki, so I made classes with these Saturday, Sunday. I won't be able to like take out time from this. I'm like, that guy, I'm, I'm comparing that guy and this guy. Like, yeah. Those are oh, so there is a lot. Exactly in our business, hmm. you know, urban cities are over-serviced. Yeah. And when I talked about get rich and stay rich, yeah. the get rich population is not getting access. Mm -hmm. I was speaking to a guy who runs a ed tech company where they do, you know, smaller English speaking courses, writing, you know, operating Facebook, Gmail, mm -hmm. knowing G Suite, the small town guys who's running his house or his office, a small business. Yeah. He's very keen to learn all this. He's happy to pay. He values all this. Yeah. But in a large city, I think you always are over haunted for all this. Mm -hmm. You're trying to do four things at the same time. So yeah, there are those challenges. Uh, so how was your experience working with Axis and Goldman Sachs and what did it actually help you with, with what you're doing right now? Did it teach you something about the ecosystem? Or... Oh, of course, of course. I mean, I have, uh, uh, like I said in the beginning, I think I have find uh, myself to be an extremely fortunate to have gotten these opportunities to work in these firms yeah. and also to work with the people that I've worked. Mm -hmm. So I feel that uh, for me, uh, uh, with all due respect, it is people more than the brand. Yeah. You always work with people. 
uh, and I think brand is an overlay. Mm. And uh, yeah, you know, uh, so so I've always uh, and one of the things that is unique about my career is that which I now learnt about it when I look back, it was not by design, but it is probably uh, the way it shaped up, and I enjoyed it. Mm. Is that most of my stints I've joined in as the part of the founding team. Mm. I was amongst the first few people who joined there. Uh, so I had a client who was. You were Golden Sun. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, in India. Mm-hmm. Of so course. <laughs> in, in India and in the AMC business. So what I'm trying to say is that you know that uh, obviously gives you a very unique perspective of the build out phase and uh, you know the, mm. what you get exposed to at that time is that there are hardly any roles there is hardly any slotting you are basically supposed to do everything mm-hmm. that exposure is i think phenomenal just phenomenal in terms of learning and uh, that is something that i've always believed in i mean whenever i get bored it is not because of anything else mm-hmm. but because that particular thing has stopped uh, you know offering me anything more to learn mm-hmm. that's when you stop ki i don't want to do it anymore maybe you want to modify it or, or find a different challenge mm-hmm. or find a different challenge uh, uh to to choose so how was your college life and i wanted to ask you like is it uh, uh ki mba uh, was it more like education for you or you want to build a community there and what was it like so because I think- iipm back in school i used to listen to that guy he used to come on tv that Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah, yeah. What was his name again? Arindam. Arindam. Yes, Arindam. yes, of course. <laughs> I think uh, so. Let me say this. I uh, I think I thoroughly enjoyed my uh, uh, schooling life mm-hmm. and my college. Yeah. I would think I was a very mediocre and an average student. Oh, I was never top of my class, mm-hmm. and uh, but I think things changed after. the management program because somehow uh, i started enjoying that i mean forget the institution and its pedigree and all that but i really enjoyed the content and what was being taught there i think some somehow that really caught my fascination and for the first time i enjoyed studying yeah right otherwise i was not a studying guy i was more into sports Uh, uh all my uh, schooling and college career mm-hmm. uh, wise so i think uh, that's what set me on that path of you know chasing uh, 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 to learn more to understand the math and mechanics behind business mm-hmm. strategy uh, execution yeah uh, 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 i think uh, some parts of i also got fascinated with leadership yeah uh, Uh, i think successful organizations are actually more about leadership hmm. of how leaders have been able to uh, collate the right skill sets hmm. uh, uh, and to be able to you know drive them towards a common goal towards a common passion how do you make the organization's passion become the individual's passion hmm. Hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, i think i think th- those are stuff those are topics that really caught my imagination and uh, so i have always loved uh, therefore when i say i have enjoyed working with people i am a sucker for all this so i would really enjoy working and some of the people that i have worked with are just brilliant in terms of you know how they handled themselves in times of crisis how they have handled themselves Uh, in terms of building out institutions yeah. uh, so i think that is something that uh, 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 at least i keep, take back as very very fond memories from my various stints i've seen cup uh, like most of these leaders uh, of great organizations are very uh, you know they have this thing of micromanaging everything you know they are micro managers they want to like they get into sales also they get to this also do that as well but there are some people like say steve jobs you know like he said ki i am going to get great people on board and they are going to tell us what to do you know how to grow the business rather than me micromanaging it so what's your style of 
leadership that way are you like the micromanager type or are you like how do you go about it so first of all uh, i my belief system is a little uh, radical so first of all i believe that life does not exist in black and white hmm. okay life exists in hmm. uh so therefore when you say either you micromanage or you completely do the what steve jobs said because no, i don't think are, like, no no yeah. i'm just saying i'm just yeah. saying that yeah. for I me that came it, out of pencil <laughs> Dude, I, I so I think for me it is a bit of both. Yeah. And the reason I say it is bit of both is that I think if you read his biography and see the movies that have been made on him, hmm. I think it is very important for the leader uh, to have a very strong. opinion and a path hmm. now whether that path and opinion is opinionated whether it is open for suggestions it hmm. is open for course correction yeah. and all that are different issues hmm. but according to me uh, the leader has to be the rudder of the ship hmm. because everybody looks upon him or her for direction hmm. right and then the distance comes from the engines mm. Mm. right yeah so the engines are the people working in the organization yeah. so then you select the engines mm. Mm. right so you select the engines you cannot be everything so i think to that extent i believe that uh, but pure engines cannot do anything Yeah, so, so you think, I think it goes for business, for politics, for everything? Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. I mean, you look at what is happening today in our po- political uh, dispensation. Hmm. It is because of a very strong rudder. Yeah, yeah. Rightly or wrongly, I mean, I'm not going yeah, into a debate course, on that. Yeah, yeah. But what yeah. I'm trying to say is that the the leadership is defining, is galvanizing the entire ecosystem. Mm-hmm. and what is not working for the other mainstream part party for us is again the leadership mm-hmm. they have all the second line of experienced political leaders i still believe they have a a very large uh, uh, party workforce on the ground and so on so forth mm-hmm. but nobody the leadership is not able to give a direction they are not getting galvanized together and lot of times they are working at cross purposes Yeah, 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 and it gets funny after a while. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So I think to me, uh, the 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 thing about leadership is is a very very strong uh, thing, and actually, the role of leadership is now in twenty first century and beyond is mm-hmm. going to be even more important. Yeah, even more important. So, what do you think, like a role of a leader is uh, in a startup space, or like what is the role of an entrepreneur or a leader? I know, of course, uh, for the entrepreneurial, uh, for the startup, it's going to be to lead the organization. But I want to know, like, what's the, uh, say, like, uh, what's what's the role of an entrepreneur in the society that we are in right now? Is what I want to ask. I think the role of a entrepreneur in a society is to bring about change, a positive change. Look out for problems and look out for solutions for that. Yeah. And and that uh, that is at a uh, at a broader level, mm. Mm. right? From an actionable perspective, it keeps changing depending upon the phase that the firm is in. right so when you are in the first zero to first zero to three year phase mm. you are completely hands on because you are just trying to put everything together yes right you putting mm. the building blocks and you trying to make sure that the 
parts that i put in for the uh, uh, for the engine are all to the right parts they're all going to go forward and not one of them is going to go backwards and one of them is going to go and so on and so forth i think once the business from 3 to 5 years i'm just taking some numbers it could yeah, yeah. depending upon the form and the business line it could change but yeah. then it goes into a different league and then uh, at a later stage i think the challenges or the the job requirements or the uh, uh, you know the key uh, requirements from a leader change to that extent actually i hear this very often that uh, you know for for like a startup or a Or, or like any company for that matter, it's mainly the problem and the solution. Now that we have got this problem, problem identified, go for the solution next. But in the world that we are in right now, the biggest problem is poverty and illiteracy for like major population on this planet. So, uh, how are startups actually contributing to that? Because still, uh, like you know, uh, whatever that happens in Africa and Rwanda or like whatever happens over there, there are only NGOs or UN that goes over there. There is no startup startup involvement, or even like the people who sleep under the flyover. Only the NGOs, non-profit are actually able to go about it. So, uh, if like that is the major problem, uh, is the startup space not getting into that because there is no return on investment, or like what do you think about? It? Actually, I tend to disagree with you here. Yeah. Uh, the way I look at it is that this startup movement is. uh is actually heralding in a completely new thought process hmm. right and that thought process is that up till now historically we have looked at the governments to provide either measures for poverty alleviation yes. or you know provide jobs and i think now there is enough empirical evidence to support the fact that no government can do it Mm-hmm. it is a dynamic challenge it it is a goal post that keeps shifting mm-hmm. you try and say oh by 2020 we will get 100000 families or a million families out of poverty mm-hmm. by 2020 actually the economic strata has changed so much mm-hmm. corona has happened and then actually some another million have been pushed into poverty yeah right so i think the therefore the the goal post has to move beyond the governments and ngos mm. and i feel that and i'm borrowing from the current political dispensation that atmanirbhar mm. at a certain stage mm. i think people have to take charge of their financial well being and their future in their own hands yeah. they cannot be dependent upon the governments of the day mm. to provide employment Mm. right yeah. so to that extent i feel that startups the very thought of entrepreneurship mm. and that entrepreneurship could be anything mm. right it today the way i look at it is the guy who delivers zomato food mm-hmm. or the guy who drives an uber yeah or the guy who actually does deliveries on amazon mm. is actually an entrepreneur now of course right because he gets up in the morning and chooses his hours of day hmm. i want to work only for 4 hours or i want to work for 14 hours hmm. right yeah what is my weekly day off i choose i don't want to work on mondays i put my switch off mm-hmm. yeah right so to that extent actually uh, you are in some sense bringing on more entrepreneurial spirits and journeys uh, to reality mm-hmm. right point 1 point 2 the point that you made about profit mm-hmm. i think barring a few startups all of them are in losses yes they are actually trying to chase a dream to say oh i we will fix this problem mm-hmm. none of them therefore the starting point is solving a problem the starting point is not to say i want to create 100 crores worth of profitability yeah yeah that's not realistic also that i'll build a 100 crore company no i'm just saying if the if the if that is the problem statement that i want to make 100 crores of profit yeah 
then the path to that has to be different. Okay. Right? Then it could not be about solving the problem of payment of bills and solving the problem of access and distribution. Yeah. So to me, actually, what, what you are seeing from the startup ecosystem today is just the iceberg principle. People are just looking at these Actually, what it is really representing is a very large uh, uh, tectonic shift in what is happening in the world. So like uh, if a guy wants to start out and scale the business, get investment, so can you uh, share some process or step-by-step -step thing, uh, like a gen generic trajectory of the start startup? You have to come again on this one. I'm saying like if a person wants to start out, uh, like you, you know, form a company, uh, what, what is like the ge generic trajectory uh, of like, say, finding a solution and then getting finances sorted and then promoting it. Yeah. Like I, I just shared with you a little while ago. I think mm. the problem, the mm. solution, how large is that problem? Is it yeah. worth solving for? If it's, if, mm. Is it only going to impact a few hundred people or is it going to impact a hundred thousand people? Mm. Therefore, what is the cost of doing this? Mm. Therefore, what is the uh, uh, you know revenue model out of this? Mm. Mm. And, uh, and then you go on to the execution path to say, okay, what are the resources that I need? Yeah. What financial resources do I need? What human resources do I need? And what are some uh, roadblocks to look out for? Could be like physical, mental, or environment based, like outside. So, what are some roadblocks that, like, I think everything be... will be, a, I think everything will be a roadblock. Mm -hmm. Since uh, you are trying to solve a problem, so yeah, of course, roadblocks are going to be. I think when you are trying to do something, there is bound to be roadblocks after roadblocks. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you have to be really mentally prepared if you're going down this path that nothing will be easy and you will have to be like the mobile phone charger mm. you know you will get discharged every day you when you go to sleep you have to find your own source of motivation and your own source of strength building and inspiration next morning you have to be back with full charge and vigor and again ready to be discharged <laughs> smilingly of course <laughs> and uh, i want to ask you uh he, when this covid happened when Modi became a tv and said from 22nd march everything was be shut how did it boy yeah, yeah. yeah so how did it affect you affect your routine like what did oh i think we like everybody else we were not prepared at all uh, no. I think it took uh, everybody by surprise mm. and uh, uh, there were two, three very strong uh, 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 headwinds that we had to face. Uh, first was, of course, loss in business, loss in revenue. Mm. Uh, and uh, uh, second was how do we ensure business continuity? Yeah. Because at the end of the day, we are an online platform. Customers were making transactions every single day. Offices are no longer functioning. How do we ensure that all our colleagues are uh, safe uh, in, in a safe environment and are able to be productive, are, are able to keep the platform uh, functionality service levels up and running because the customers continue to transact. Yeah. So uh, that was the other uh, challenge. Uh, and that was the immediate challenge, I think, for the first 30 days. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the next stage of the challenge was that the fear kind of increased. The number of cases started to go up mm -hmm. in, in mid-April, uh, uh, end April, May. Uh, then it was about well-being of our colleagues. Uh, so we ensured that a lot of them were not from Delhi mm -hmm. uh, and they used to stay either in student housing or with you know, in 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 a in co-living arrangements with other colleagues, okay. so other friends. So we had to ensure that uh, uh, you know they went back home. They they went back to their parents, to their to their domiciles, to their yeah. residences where they could be safe. They could be comfortable. Uh, 
uh, as the city was being shut down there were you know uh, 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 constraints around food around availability of staff and so on mm-hmm. so forth so uh, i think that was the phase 2 part yeah uh, of the challenge then came the phase 3 part of the challenge which is i think this generation the youngsters have never been exposed to something like this why youngsters even we have not been exposed to something like this yeah, yeah. and then came the third challenge which i which was more mental mm. to say yeah. that people started to think okay now covid has happened i am in lockdown my kaam bhi kar raha hu work is also going fine and so on so forth yeah but where is all this leading to is there a future what will happen will i survive will mm. you know will we all get covid Mm-hmm. will we get the uh, so i think the mental trauma started to kind of play out mm-hmm. and that's where we intensified our you know weekly catch ups non work related mm-hmm. right just we, something we started uh, called a happy hour just get on a call chit chat how was the week maybe encourage people to open a beer sit with their soft drink bag yeah. of chips yeah. just chat stuff like that couple of times we got uh, external guys uh, mm. to to come and you know stand up comics and just just an external ice breaker to mm. chat with them yeah. and so on so forth keep the tempo and the motivation levels uh, high yeah and uh, then came the fourth phase which is kind of now where there seems to be some level of acceptance to all this and mm, yeah fact that okay it, right? ho gaya hai, things have started to open up and yeah. you know we have started to get murmurs to say when are you going to open office we want to now come back mm. even if it is it is couple of days a week yeah we want yeah. to start that. so i think early jan we jan we will take a call on that and slowly start to op- the process of open up mm. and uh, actually your uh, your colleagues and your uh, these guys are working from home only yeah so far okay. everyone from everyone uh one last question and one very dramatic <laughs> you can choose to answer or not to answer it. any rock bottom experience that you i faced in life and what did you actually learn from it yeah i don't know i mean uh, there have been lot of uh, uh, i think the last year has been uh, two years actually have been exceedingly tough yeah. and uh, what i have learned is that uh, this ta- shall to pass so uh, rightly or wrongly i feel i have now become a little more uh, hardened uh neither i do i get too happy on uh you know uh, new milestones and mm-hmm. neither do i get too sad on any uh, uh you know low moments yeah so become a little more uh, harder like huh Bhutan. yeah because i think what i've realized is that uh, you know both are passing phases and you I, i mean i've seen enough of these now so <laughs> Yeah, I've read the brochure a couple of times. <laughs> so I've yeah, I mean, I rather find happiness in uh, other stuff, right? Yeah, uh, spending time with kids or going out and mm-hmm. pursuing something that is a little bit of a stress buster, and you know, does all that. Yeah. So yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. Thanks and thanks for the comment. It was a pleasure talking to you. I know I really uh, pushed the limit on this one. Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome and yes, I will see you soon. Thank you for this. Sure. Thanks so much. Yeah. Take care.